I'm going to compare three wide angle lenses that I've used and make some recommendations with respect to which ones I think you should buy and why. And I'm gonna end the video by briefly talking about a fourth lens, which actually happens to be my favorite lens, wide angle or not. This fourth lens is the one I'm actually filming on right now. So let's get to it. I have been experimenting with finding the right ultra wide lens, or I guess maybe set of lenses. I don't have a huge amount of space to film. So if I wanna include just a little bit of that uh, perspective, I need a wide angle lens. Initially, I purchased a Sam Gang lens, which was an F 2.8. Uh, but it was a manual focus. It was a fisheye lens. It gave you a really neat perspective, but I'm just not pro enough to use a manual focus. So I'm actually returning that lens. So that's actually one of the lens I wanted to talk about. I have talked about it in the past and I actually recommended that you purchase one. It's a really cool lens. It's very unique in the shots that it takes. I will share some of the shots that I took with it in this video but at this point, I actually don't recommend it if you are going to be using it to shoot videos or even really, to be honest with you, a lot of stills, just because the manual focus makes it hard to work with. You kind of want that auto focus. There are two other lenses that I have that are wide angle lenses. The Canon RF mount 16 millimeter F 2.8. This guy right here, as you can see, it has a really tiny little lens cap. It's the smallest lens cap I've seen on a lens, to be honest with you. This is a great little lens. I got it because my Canon R7 is an RF mount camera. It's an APS-C, you know, it has the cropped sensor. This 16 millimeter will work with a full frame. I wanted something that didn't have to use an adapter. Every one of my other lenses is either an EF mount or an EFS mount, which requires an adapter. And this is also fantastic for the fact that it's really tiny and you can take it out for point and shoot type uh, photography. All my other lenses tend to be a little weightier. They're maybe a little bit less practical for just kind of everyday use. My third lens that I want to talk about, which I recently purchased, the uh, Tokina ATX-I 11 to 16 millimeter F 2.8 CF. That lens actually goes from 11 to 16. So it gives you 16 millimeter uh, focal length that, that this lens gives you. It's also an F 2.8. So in a way it covers everything that the Canon RF 16 millimeter F 2.8 gives you, but it's a little bit of a bigger lens. Now let's talk a little bit about the Tokina lens. This is the uh, Tokina that I was just talking about. I will film on this so you can see what it's like to film on it. I will also film on the 16 millimeter lens that I just showed you so you can see what it's like um, to film on that. Just this same sort of office view. This is the size. It's very well constructed. The Canon is plastic all around. This has mostly metal, some plastic. It's somewhat heavy um, and it's well built. It feels sturdy in the hand. It comes with this lens hood and the Way you switch from manual to autofocus on this thing, however, is through this ring right sort of here. You actually have to kind of pull it down and you go into a manual focus and then pull it back up and you're in autofocus. Not a huge fan of that aspect, but it doesn't bother me too much because I don't really use manual focus all that much. So yeah, this is fantastic. No complaints. I love it. If you have an APS-C camera and you have a choice between the RF mount uh, 16 millimeter and this, and you really don't want to have both of them, I would recommend going for this one. It's a little more expensive, but it gives you that 11 to 16 millimeter range. Uh, that's pretty cool. One other sort of point to note is that it's autofocus is really noisy and loud. If you're using a remote microphone like I am, then it's not that big of a deal. By the way, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my channel so that I can continue to bring you material like this. Also, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section 
as to whether you like this kind of material that I'm producing or not. I'm learning along the way with respect to making YouTube videos and I'm happy to share what I learn with you as I go. I've added links to the lenses that I'm recommending here and my Canon R7 camera, all of which I purchased on Amazon. I think the R7 is actually the best bang for the buck in the Canon line right now, even though it isn't full frame. All right, now I'm shooting with the 16 millimeter Canon RF lens, which is a native RF mount, so I don't need to use an adapter. For the most part, it is a pretty cool little lens, similar in respect to what the Tokina offers at this focal length. However, it's very compact, and because it's a native lens and because it's compact, I am excited to have it in my kit. It's a great sort of point and shoot. If I wanna go out and I don't wanna carry a heavier lens, this is the one I'll use. Although, to be honest, I probably don't actually need to keep this lens because the Tokina offers pretty much everything that le this lens offers and more, right? It is uh, an f2.8. It's a wide angle zoom lens, so it gives you a little bit more range from 11 to 16 millimeters, unlike this Canon lens, which only gives you the 16 millimeter focal length. I think I'm gonna keep the Canon lens, but I really probably don't need to. And the reason for that, again, is because it's the only lens that I have that's actually an RF lens, and the Canon R7, the camera that I'm shooting this on, is an RF mount camera, APS-C camera. And I guess one other reason is that this lens is actually uh, capable of being used on a full frame camera, which I don't currently have, but I am waiting for Canon to release their next generation full frame mirrorless cameras. All right, so now I'm filming on the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f2.8. As you can see, it gives me a really wide uh, perspective, which is what I wanted for this lens. Obviously, I'm filming it at the maximum focal length that it offers, which is 16 millimeters. If I went even sort of lower, you'd see even more of the room. Because it is an ultra wide zoom lens, unless I get really, really close to it, you're not gonna get the background blur, um, which is okay uh, for an ultra wide lens. If I get really, really close, it should blur the background a little bit, as you can see there. But then if I kind of pull back, you'll be able to see the background. Yeah, it's a great lens and it gets a lot of great reviews online. I'm obviously using it on my uh, Canon R7 and I'm using it using an adapter because it is an EF uh, S lens. It is a fantastic lens and I, I really like it. Out of the three, I would recommend the Tokina. Having said all of that, you're probably wondering, or you might be wondering what I'm filming on right now, which is giving me a wide angle view. And that is a beast of a lens. It's my favorite lens. It is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F 1.8. And right now I'm actually shooting at uh, aperture of f2.8 because if I go down lower than that, it just lets in so much brightness. But the beautiful thing about it is I can crank the ISO way down and reduce the grain. Yeah, this is an awesome lens. It's fantastic uh, outdoors, it's fantastic indoors. It just lets in a ton of light. It creates fantastic background blur under the right circumstances. If I come up close to the lens, you should see uh, the background blurring there a little bit. If I crank the aperture down even lower, then you'll get even more background blur or bokeh, which is really cool. It looks great. And I, I guess that's kind of like a fourth lens that you can count as a wide angle. It goes from 18 to 35, so it's not an ultra wide, but it's still a wide angle, and it's just so versatile and so useful. So. Consider just getting that if you don't really need the ultra wide, which you can get with the other lenses that I've talked about. If you had to choose between all four of those lenses, then I would recommend the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F1.8 DC art lens. Go out and get this lens. Uh, you're not gonna be disappointed. So please do subscribe, hit the like button, hit the little dingy bell, and uh, get notified when I release new videos. Thanks and see you in the next one.